business owner. Good evening. I'd like to call this regular meeting of the Board of Selectmen to order uh, Tuesday, April 14th at, in 2022 at uh, 7 p.m. Um, oh, no, wait. 19. 19. Yes, 19. I told you. Okay. Uh, bottom line is because we're still doing the virtual meetings. Hi, Jen. Um, this meeting is held in person and virtual, session being video and audio are recorded. Board members are present, so we don't have to worry about that. Public input should have been in 24 hours in advance. And if you want to speak during audience of citizen, please raise your hand, wave at us, or get into the chat. And uh, when we unmute your microphone, please include your name and address in any manner that you are making a comment. Uh, next, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Make a motion we approve the agenda as it's been presented. Anybody um, changes, additions? All those in favor? Uh, opposed? Thank you. Audience of citizens, anything not on the agenda? Uh, once again, I'd like to introduce Connor, who is our town representative for the Chronicle. Uh, again, I always like to see him here. He's been here many times and he's put us on the front page of the Chronicle. Mostly all good things. <laughs> so, thank you very much for the way you cover the uh, cover the town. You really put a very nice light on it. Uh, no old business, new business. Establishment of the 2022 annual budget town meeting. I move to establish the fiscal minutes. Minutes. Oh. Um, minutes. minutes. Minutes of April 5th. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. I move to approve the board select the regular meeting minutes from April 5th. Any discussion? Actually, very quick meeting. Bill wasn't here to talk about it. He's long distance, so we kept it. Anybody? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. So we need to set the town meeting for the annual budget. I move to establish the fiscal year 22-23 annual town budget meeting for Tuesday, May 10th, in the year 2022 at 7 p.m. in Yeomans Hall. 323 Route 87, Columbia, Connecticut, for the following purpose to take action on the proposed annual town budget for fiscal year 2022 2023. Copies of the proposed budget are available online at the website of columbiact.org, as well as in the town clerk's office. So, May 10th, 7 p.m., you will All those in favor? Aye. All right. Good. Thank you. Just isn't there a meeting beforehand? It's just not knowing I think it should possibly. Don't we usually have like the week before? Those are public hearings. Oh, public hearing, thank it you. It is scheduled already. Okay, it's but I'm just, I'm just saying April. we shouldn't mention it. That's all. Okay. So mentioned. So mentioned. When is that? April 27th. Okay. It's set uh, in your hands. Hey, that's yeah, all. Away from tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Seven point two presentation of the Joshua's Trust Annual Conservation Award to me. To you. Hmm. You know, this is uh, many cooks. You know, spoil the soup. Many, many uh, conservationists helped this go forward. So, I mean, I was a, it was just a small part. So, 
Yeah, thank you very much. Now, can you get up and read it for me? <laughs> You're good at this kind of thing. Cash was tracked conservation and historic trust is a non profit conservation organization which protects nearly five thousand acres in the quiet corner, ensuring that all of that open space will be protected in perpetuity. The Joshua's Trust service area extends throughout 14 towns in Wyndham and Tallinn counties. And um, they, many of the properties are open to the public so that they can appreciate it and enjoy it. But when they also maintain two historic sites, the Gravelville Horsnell and the Atwood Farm, where our headquarters are in Lansby. Um, the Andrew Lake Joshua's Trust recognizes outstanding volunteers within our organization. But they also recognize volunteer um, groups and individuals outside of our organization who have made significant contributions to the conservation of open space. So this year's individual conservation award is given to Stephen Everett for his efforts in land conservation, in land conservation. Columbia has been working for many years, as you all know, um, on a thousand acre priority forest wetland in the southeast corner of town. We had limited success with that until our first selectman got on board and became enthused about the project. So the 2022 vote goes to Stephen Everett of the town of Columbia. His efforts, his efforts, I got one more paragraph there, so it's not up. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> his, his efforts <laughs> resulted in the acquisition of approximately 600 contiguous acres of priority forests and wetland connecting two state parks. With his support, this project has come to fruition. And we have just was just a very proud to present this to you. Thank you very much. I will tell you when you when you have when you have a cornerstone like Anne, uh, you know, I felt like I I felt like I was a mule and you were right behind me, you know, helping me navigate until the, to, to, that's right. But uh, you know, looking at it and talking to you about it and looking at the, the park and everything, it can be so open and wonderful and it really can you know and selfishly bring some business to the town of columbia and the, and the surrounding yeah. area um you know i was thinking about it there's probably very few days when you talk about conservation it's the first snowfall of the winter you're out there it's crisp it's fresh it's probably springtime when you can get out there on that first 70 degree day and you're walking through there. <clears throat> and really, it's when you see the kids riding their bikes by you on the trails and stuff. It's, it's really very nice. I mean, it's time to, to stop and just think about what's going on and appreciate what we have. So I, I'm very honored to get this and uh, to be a part of this. Believe me, a small part. There's so many people behind this who deserve this probably a lot. Not more than I do, but we'll keep going, okay? 
But you see, they're all members of trust. Is trust. <laughs> and this is for an this is for an outlander. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Read that middle. we got more. How's that? Right. Smile. Mm -hmm. Closer, so I get the close up. I need to be. Yeah. <laughs> I hate close ups. <laughs> Cameras are way too good today. <laughs> I totally agree. I had to take my mask off and so the ring will show. All we got to do is invest 18 grand with the new teeth. Yeah. That's what I showed Well, thank you very much. <laughs> At least this, not really. this this award was actually uh, awarded at the Shasta Trust in Wilton. But Stephen couldn't make it there, so uh, so I couldn't let him get away with it. Mm -hmm. I had to do it. Oh, thank you. And, and apologize for that. <laughs> you get right. uh, 2022 Boat Born Lottery. So we have uh, 14 slips, and by three o'clock today, we have 14 people. That's cool. And then somebody came and said, Oh, I forgot. So, what we're going to do is we're going to pull one, and the one we pull does not get a slip. Right? So, my deputy select one. <laughs> yeah, I want that job. <laughs> so, uh, if you were very, very sad, young money winner. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, you can take it. Yeah, okay. Uh, Ryan McDonald. Ryan. Ryan. Ryan McDonald. Yeah. Okay. So he doesn't get it. So we're sorry. Um, yes. Yeah, yeah. And um, the board, the recommendation from the rec director was he would prefer if the board selectman would change instead of a lottery to have. No one can apply until April 1st. And then after that, it's first come, first serve till we fill up. And then we just say, once we're full. What if they're down in Florida when they can't be here April 1st? I, there's no good way to do it. It's yeah, just. I remember the conversation that you had with Luke <laughs> Scotty when you first got here. He took you aside and said, people don't like change. I know. <laughs> hey, bro. But this, <laughs> this is a no brainer. <laughs> Back when it never filled up. Yeah, we I was gonna say had, we have never had it filled, have we? It's all it's been the last couple of years, it's been close. Okay. And then it did fill. Oh, you're in here because you're we we had eight people on the slips and eight. So you didn't get it was just the mornings that were one more than we had. Mm -hmm. So okay. leave it the way it is. I like say Ryan, you're the winner, but I know. Okay, uh, 7.4, approval to accept the ESS <laughs> proposal for the 2022 annual limnological data gathering analysis and related consultation regarding Columbia Lake. Uh, what? Yeah, I know, I've studied. What's I'm, What's I'm, I'm, we'll get to that, I'm gonna get to it. I move to approve the ESS proposal for the year 2022 annual Limnological data gathering analysis and related consultation regarding Columbia Lake as presented and authorize Mark Walter to sign the contract for the town of Columbia. Okay, so here's what happened. The lake needs to be tested yearly now, every month. I believe we're going to test it every month. Um, and an outside firm is going to do it. We can do it volunteers, I was here with LMAC and they said they can talk about getting volunteers to do it in the off weeks, but it needs to be tested because as the water warms and the runoff comes in and the fertilizer used on wherever in town come into the lake, that's why we're seeing the algae and the, and the growth and um, we're not mixing up the bottom enough to get the sediment, the, the leaves and stuff that set Settles down there. So they need to test it and analyze it and keep an eye on it and treat it. Yes. Yeah. From what are we testing? 
So. <clears throat> well, you know, every year when we have the floating algae that goes around and we're testing the water quality and we're going to analyze it, and by quote, we're, we're looking, we're going to do a test for how far you can see through the water, you know, okay. the sucky disc okay. and oxygen levels, like we always have. Yeah. It used to be like 30 yeah. years with Bob Portman. And bacteria. Bacteria, cyanobacteria, which is a new bigger concern. Yeah. Um, so we've lost Bob Portman. Bob Portman sold his business to, which is now GZL. Okay. And um, we yeah. also had another big bidder that we. So this went out to bid. Yes. Okay. So LMAC chose ESS Group. Okay. Which um, GZA is a very large corporation. ECS Group is like 24 people more local. Okay. Um, ESS is also going to analyze for water coming into the lake, uh, what kind of things are coming off the lawns, coming out of the giant um, cattail area up there. So it was a very in-depth analysis between the two companies. And uh, LMAC and myself and a team from LMAC, and Stephen was on the final meeting when we were talking about it. They, they would like to take this opportunity to try another company called ESS. And ESS came in almost $10,000 less than the existing company. Okay. So we, so we, we even know there are out of Rhode Island, they've got more for They have a, 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 a rep we work with in Connecticut. What's the cost? I'm just, it's like 18. Yeah, yeah it's, we, have, um, we have 20, I think 20, we budgeted, but the liminologist part is 18, and then you we'll probably have another 2,600 to 3,000 for testing at the Yukon lab. There's a local lab we'll be using. So I, the contract is not quite perfected. I'm still working on it. Mayor's authority should be coming back Monday. We'll tweak a few things. I just wanted the board to authorize. Uh, Stephen's going to sign it, but I'll just do a final signature when we have it written. Okay, so this isn't anything really new. We're just right. We're just changing vendors. I, I want you to be aware of it, okay. and it's actually still going to be within the budget. Um, I was just being yeah. well, <clears throat> a little bird is on my shoulder talking to me about model pond. We're not testing model pond. Model pond at this point, um, and I think three years ago when we talked talked about trying to do some things at Mono Pond, we couldn't come up with a solution. And Mono Pond was almost, you hate to say, lost. However, I think we need to contact the state and try and find some, some help to bring Mono Pond, get it under control and stuff like that. But it's very, well, the good thing is it's so costly. It is the state's land. It, okay, yeah, we told the reason them we have the problem is because it's state, state 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 state. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna true. ask Ian to Ian, I'm gonna recognize you because I know you're yeah, yeah. chairman of conservation. <laughs> yes, okay. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not talking about the invasives, you're right, they've taken over one of them because of the boat but um. Mono Pond is the other Columbia Lake. And I wondered if once in a while somebody might want to test the water quality. Because when Bob Cortman did the whole, did his thing there and, and studied Mono Pond and sent back a report that said, <coughs> Um, there's not much you can do. Um, he also, at the time, tested the quality, and he said that the water quality was good. It's good. Everybody was good. Um, the fish are happy. You know, that kind of thing. Well, so I'm not looking, because no one swims there, I'm not looking to have that <clears throat> tested every week or whatever, like the lake. However, people have fish there and they do probably eat those fish. And so uh, maybe once a season or once in a while, 
If we could mm -hmm. just test the water quality. Okay. If we could add that mm -hmm. into the contract. Well, there are people. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to do that. Good idea. Yeah. That kind of we'll work there. Okay, thank you. Thank you. You commented on the uh, invasive species there. What, what's the situation with that? That's a lost cause. We um, and, <laughs> and, and unless I think we take more money than God has to effectively um, get rid of the invasives in there. It's they good have for fishing. A really good foothold. And it's a different kind of lake. It's it's shallow, lots of sunlight. And so invasives just went crazy. Um, I think there was a couple of choices. They were going to bring in invasive yes. species, invasive plant like yes. carp that just died. Uh, well, they were they were neutered. <laughs> yeah, they don't reproduce. No, they, they eat, eat, eat and die. The Scarlet. other thing was to drain the pond to a certain level and try to eradicate it that way. Yeah. But it's really it's 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 taken over at least a third of it. I think Corbin recommended they don't do anything; just let it. Can people can do it? Oh, absolutely. So it's not sure. so bad that they can't get through. And, stuff. and if you go out there <clears throat> um, while it's cold in winter. That looks great. Oh, you yeah. can't see a single. It's gorgeous. Basin. The water's but still in, crystal clear. In July and August, yes. you could practically walk across <laughs> the big <laughs> in the back. back. <laughs> and, and, uh, nope. No. So, uh, but it would. It's tremendous. Think if you drained it and dragged everything out, you can't get all of it. Yeah, it'll come back. And it would ruin it. Yeah. You know? So uh, it kind of is what it is, but it's still good to keep an eye on it, a professional eye on it, just in case something. But we look into it right now. We're going to uh, vote on the ESS proposal. All those in favor of having them sign a contract? Aye. 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 Opposed? Also, I'm giving Mark authorization. I mean, that's where we are. Um, 7.5 approval to authorize energy unlimited for the Murphy House HVAC system. I move to approve the vendor energy unlimited LLC proposal to install the ductless heat pump system for heating and cooling at the Murphy House at the cost of $12,000. Explain why. Please do. Up to the board. So we got three quotes. Um, the high quote was fifteen thousand three sixty four. The low quote quote was eleven thousand one ninety five. Mm -hmm. So the facilities director Jason Nosad has recommended the twelve thousand dollar quote because what they used was larger. It says here in his justification. Sizing the equipment is larger. It will allow for another indoor unit to be added if the need comes due to upgrading and remodeling. So if we ever use the attic, or if we ever want heating units in the lifeguard area or the bathroom hallway, you, you, you could add. So he's saying it's worth the extra $800 to have angry, the ability to add up. I mean, where does the electrical work? I mean, I see they all excluded that, but is that it comes with it when these systems it's included in the cost it should be because i had to put it in my house and they said it's x amount they have their own electricians license so it says here line voltage wire would be done by our house uh, well so both of them did it and this one excludes the electrical work and this right, one right they all excluded electrical work. so um it must be coming out of this budget for Contract for HVAC contract. We do have an HVAC budget. We put 10000 in every year. Is this going on 21, 22, or 22, 23? Yeah. Yeah. 22, 23. This budget. Okay. So we have money left in that HVAC budget. In the HVAC budget. Yes. Yeah. 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 Ye
All those in favor? Aye. All right. Opposed? So I keep it. So we were uh, sent a notice by the state DOT for the installation of centerline rumble strips on Route 66, uh, nearly like at the plaza down there, running all the way to the overpass uh, in Willamette. Okay. And they wanted to know how we felt about it. I didn't want to make, I don't know how I feel about it. I wanted to bring it to the board, see how you feel about it. But also there, I'm going to tell you now, there is a dotted passing uh, small coming westbound on Route 66 East in front of the main moose. Mm -hmm. It starts right at the corner there where Atkins Garage is. And it's basically there. I went down and looked at it today because I didn't remember any passing zone. There's a passing zone there? Yes, there is. <laughs> Westbound only. So it, it starts right when you get by the corner there, and it ends about 100 feet before yeah, its crazy. entrance to the main books. So yeah. basically, anybody coming out of there, now that that is well established down there, anybody coming out of there, they're going to be a target for anybody who's passing on that strip. So we're going to ask DOT at the same time, if we decide on the rumble strips, we want that no passing and a no passing area. So the call is uh, going to be placed after we discuss this. I don't like the noise of the rumble strips, but honestly, there was a death down there three years ago. Last year, there was an accident with an elderly couple trying to pull out of the main goose area. I do think that it's it's very, and I've been down there eating, and it's uh, the, the speed on which people go on that thing is too much. So this would help. It's not going to solve it, but it could help. Yeah. So it wakes you up. I mean, you hear it when you go over those things. You sleep when you drive. So uh, I move to support the installation of the center line rumble strips in the area of Route 66, should be Route 66 East, a distance of 1.8 miles as described in the Kinetic Department of Transportation letter. Is that in here, Mark? Yes. Yeah. Great. Uh, dated March 9th, 2022. In addition to ask DOT to eliminate the passing zone in same uh, 1.8 mile strip. See if you can throw in a couple of traffic signals too, like at Pine Street and West Street there. Oh, I know. You know, honestly, Bill, we've asked them how many times and we have. We can't even get a Left hand turn. We really need left hand turns. It needs to be widened or it needs to be. Right now, it's just an invite to go around, and that's what people are getting. Would this kind of thing help over there? These things in the road. I don't know. I, don't know I think it needs to be widened so you lines. have a turn or you have, or it yeah. needs to be narrowed so there is no going around. Here or but, just awful. Okay. Well, thanks for throwing that in, but we're going to have to pass on it. Any other discussion? Yes, Ian, what can I please? As the Could traffic be, authority what, commission. Well, here. <laughs> Would you like to do that? <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> if the shoot down here that up. Uh, from Old Willamette Road down past the gas station. You go down there. Could we have a run strip there? Because I'm scared to death. There's nowhere to go. You know, there's a cliff on one side and a cliff on the other. And, and, and guardrail the whole way, though. Yeah. And there's nowhere to go if somebody crosses the line. In our, in our acceptance, we'll ask that the DOT 
comes out here and we move a couple of different areas. So yeah, he's trying to, if you've looked at everything Columbia, people are screaming about the speed on all the back roads and stuff. On all the roads. All the it's roads. excessive everywhere. So mm. It's cars handle too well. We, we need some more. And distracted driving. So. But people, it, it's so easy to go much faster than we should be going. Cars <clears throat> just are too nice. Yeah. It's the people who are driving. <laughs> All those in favor of the motion. Aye. 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 Um, you know, I've asked the state police to come out here and you want to balance the state budget? Spend a couple of days writing tickets on it that day. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I just wish we got a cut of it. Um, not that I Columbia Lake Dam. We're good. Yes. It's actually probably filled up. It was, it, it, was, it, was, it was probably four or five inches down now. That, that's my guess. It's not much. Yeah. It's almost there. It was, was a lot of rain last night. It was coming over what the we wall. Get two, three inches? I don't know. I had a flood when I woke up in the morning. That bad way. Yeah, so uh, Appointments. I uh, move to accept the appointment of Stephen Goff Jr. to the position of Public Works Highway Maintainer. We found somebody. Yeah. He looks uh, very tall. So far, he's a great fit to the team. And we're happy to have him. He's got a lot of experience and he's got. That was just a trial period, so we want to bring him on. Great. All those in six months. months. He's got to make it. Aye. Aye. Great. Opposed? Thank you. Great. Town administrator report. All right. I just want everybody aware uh, CCM, uh, Connecticut Conference of Municipalities, has created a landing page on their website uh, that we can, if you'd like, I could make that a link on our website. But it's a landing page to partner with the National League of Cities, which are our over encompassing group of all the um, CCMs around the country that direct you to the Ukraine Humanitarian Fund at the United Nations, where you can donate uh, and for things you, Ukrainian people might need. So I think you know, the board would want to authorize that link to they put this together to try to make a safe way that someone wants to donate that has been vetted by CCM. Yeah, I always question when you donate stuff. Where's I know, that going? So this is concern. cool. If this is legit. That's what CCM came up with. Other towns have done their own. Uh, they've partnered with the Red Cross or with uh, other international agencies uh, themselves. But I just threw this out to the board in case you're interested. Any other I would want to know what they hope for administrative cut. Cut. In the United Nations. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm really careful about who I donate. I know, and that's that why I didn't want to do anything without remembering yeah. by the board. I wasn't just going to make a link. Do you know how much their cut is? No. Yeah. CCM, I would hope, does. I could look into that if you want more statistics yeah. on what they, I'm sure they've done their homework and better it, but I just have I mean, to often know. there's organizations that are already in there that are much better value for your dollar. If you have any ideas, Lisa, or anyone knows of something you're more comfortable with and want to make. I just, I never Does the link just take them to CCM or actually to the United Nations? It accesses a page that CCM created that links you into, I think, the United Nations. I mean, I, I'm with you, but if it, at least that went to the CCM, people can at least, you know, I mean, that's one of the, you know, agencies that, you know, right. our membership of, I mean, at least that we have the trust. Right. Well, that's a good question. Yeah, I always question when you donate stuff. I mean, where, where's it going? I mean, this is a ton of stuff they're getting. How does it get over there? Um, well, it's not easy. It's really. And how does it get distributed properly? Right. They need stuff. Well, I know that. When the um, Haiti had its earthquakes and stuff, the money that we sent there just vanished. And but there was already mostly church groups that were already down there because they knew a guy in in uh, Norwich that 
was involved with it. And they already had it. I mean, you gave money there, you gave stuff there, and it went right down, and they knew how to distribute it. And that's just money. It just gets sucked up into a money pool that they, don't, they get a fraction. <clears throat> so, I don't know. If, if it was legit, I would say we should do it, put it on there just to make sure that, you know, with percentages and all that. But people were expecting we did our homework, so we yes. do our homework. Okay. But I'll the concept is great. I, I yeah, I like it. Okay. okay. Um, I also want to bring up the speed. We worked really hard. Uh, uh, as Ingrid, Ingrid was a big help by um, different directors of public works and um, facilities. Uh, Stephen was involved in the but we applied for a grant. It came through at the last second from House Courtney's office. Uh, we applied for a million four hundred and eighty five thousand dollars to build a six bay garage for public works and an annex. Um, there's there were qualifications and this fit within the parameters that Congress Courtney put out. And we really focused on creating equity for men and women in bathrooms, um, also creating security for vehicles. I know um, bus company just got hit last night. 13 buses lost 13 county converters, and that's going to be $3,000 per bus. Not our buses, but another town's buses. So it's just, it's not in, but we. Are they insured and everything or what? They are, the but there's parts. a deductible on all, all of them, and you can't get the parts. So now you've got oh, buses you got to roll for pick up kids that morning when you come out there. And there's yeah, I said they're going to be two hours late with whatever town. So it's so other we, towns are helping out. We put this grant in, and uh, we yeah. it, it seemed like we hit all the triggers that maybe we have a shot. Oh, that'd be nice. What, what do we have for, for our buses down there as far as monitoring them? Just a camera on the building looking out at the parking lot. And uh, we watched as a, a man siphoned gas out of our employees' cars. But it was after the fact. You know, there's no security of telling you. There's no, there's no, there's no, there's no, um, it's not like a ring system where motion activates something. Like that. I, mean, I know we, we the legislature's pushing, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. I'm just going to say, I mean, the legislature's pushing a law to make, you know, obviously um, scrapyards and whatnot, you know, can't accept that. And I, when I monitor my turn, I have to make sure that there's no market. Right. Yeah, but all they have to do is drive you down south or something. Yeah. Yeah, but then I mean to start. Right. Yeah, so right. junkyard. The local market. The car, the vehicle has to be there. Yeah. They're going to take that car no, or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we don't even own those buses. You're right. Those no, buses right, the school right. is using are subcontracted to a contract. Right. However, in in minimally, of course, you have to consider the neighbors across the street and everything. Any motion detected lights, floodlights, just blast the place. That's true. You know, at least that because they work under darkness. So, right. and also, uh, I know that. Um, Columbia Garage. I don't even know the name of it anymore. The old columns? No, down at the bottom of the hill, 7 Eleven. Okay. They put in a system that alerted the owner when they came back a second time, six months later, and the state police grabbed three people mm -hmm. and let them go the next day. So the charges weren't even brought. So it's very difficult. Whatever reason. Yeah. yeah. So, um, okay. Also, I just wanted to let everybody know Saturday, April 23rd, is the Hop River Trail Alliance cleanup day. So, if anybody wants to participate, um, it's there's a section of the trail Columbia has on the Hop River, and we're hoping that people. It's get from Mackey's. Coming toward the main moose. Right. I'm gonna tell you something. Be very careful because there's so much barberry around Mackey's where a lot of ticks spray. I once went in there with the dogs. I won't ever go again. Yeah, the ticks are bad right now. Right there, they're horrible because it's like a field of barberry, and barberry attracts the mice, which kill the ticks. And it's it. I won't. I won't go there. Now. 
And it's the, the exact time is 10 to 12, rain or shine. Volunteers are needed. It's funny. Uh, my wife and I went for a walk down here about three weeks ago. One nice afternoon we had or something. And it's behind um, Trailside Treasures mm -hmm. there. Yeah. It's a very, things that aren't treasures seem to go in the back. So, and, and they commented on it, come on, all our neighbors help us out and stuff like that. And I thought, that's a real bad section. Right there. But um, I, I, I asked about maybe the town, if there is a need or if there is a volunteer from the Department of Public Works, we would pay a couple of hours to have our trucks here. Because I don't know where all that stuff is going to go once they get it. You know, we're trying to effort the people that are putting this together when all this stuff comes out of the woods and they pile it up closer to the road. Who's getting it and where is it going? Right. So they better have a plan. The other plan is maybe we have our trucks, one or two down there to be able to accept that stuff and haul it out of there to somewhere. But we're trying to help uh, effort in helping and also making sure it doesn't become Mount Crash more uh, Route 66 in Columbia. So that's all I have. But it's a good cause. <clears throat> Thank you. A lot of correspondence there. Uh, nice article on the shopping center down there. I talked to Howard, he was very pleased. Thank you, Connor, you did a good job. And uh, some other stuff there for people to read. Good. Now we get into transfers. Uh, we have some sizable transfers. We'll, I, I move to approve the transfers totaling $44,857 as presented. So everybody has this in your so salaries administration 67. Where's that, Mark? That's under the uh, yeah. second budget. We're moving from group insurance. We have some extra there into the salary. So what salary is that? Good job. Nice job. Okay. Um, salaries, tax review services, that's fine. Salary advanced services, 2000. 2000 dollars extra on advanced services. Yes, the um, it's it's for additional hours of the band drivers because they've been running it a little more than the original budget is in hours. So Pat. Mainly, Pat, that driver has been working more than normal, trying to keep up with what they're saying. Okay, so two questions. Is that rectified in the upcoming budget? Yes. And she's not making so many hours that we're paying her over no. penalty areas. Um, the salary is a senior center. I asked about this when it was high. Basically, we had somebody working in the assessor's office one day a week, and she was needed more over at the senior center. That's just a flop of from the assessor's office putting her over to the senior center. But she has to be paid out of the senior center. Uh, inland wetlands. Well, John Valente probably worked more in the hours training our new inland wetlands agent than he did all the other time he was here. But it took a while to bring her up to um, when John felt very comfortable in her doing a, an outstanding job. So that's coming out of contingency, $17,300. So um, overtime for facilities. No, it's coming out of overtime to pay facilities. Um, yeah, it was just a bump. Well, in that budget. Yep. Just professional tax from general supplies. What department is that? Um, building official and facilities. So this was um, estimate to cover of um, facility repairs. We had a well go bad at Rec Park at the old concession stand and bathroom. So the well was shot. We had to replace the well. So it was a $4,000 bill. We had to do some work on on the facilities vehicle. Okay, great. 
Animal control, so we move some over, move money over to that since we um, since we brought on East Adams animal control. And I will tell you, I was pretty skeptical. I was in Norwich when I got the call about the young girl who got bit by the animal. And I, I, I was 18 minutes away. Was it the coyote on yes. the country? Okay. And when I drove up there, um, the, the what's his name? Mike. Mike. Mike was already there patrolling the area. So he was there pretty quick. Was it assured that was a coyote? We're, we're not we, sure. We don't have confirmation, but by the description she gave and talking to Mike and the way the attack happened, it seemed like it was definitely a coyote. He had already canvassed the area, talked to every homeowner. He had gotten a dog listing from the clerks downstairs, knocked on every door. No dog fit the description in the whole street. Mm. Um, so she underwent. Rabies. I was going to say, I mean, yeah. have rabies. She they actually not put the rabies shot right in the wounds. Really? She's a, uh, she's a boxer, a professional boxer. And um, she had a big fight coming up in April. She had to cancel the fight. Oh, gosh. Yeah. So, yeah. Was so they probably that don't know if she had rabies. Workout job. Bet you they were puppy puffs in that. So. Yeah, because they yeah, that's what she was wrong. Off, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, contracted services, general supplies, and this is contracted services. Contracted services. Uh, outside budget of permit link fees, new software. Yeah, so remember, we voted not to pass that on to a surcharge and the permit fees. So, we have to. It's in next year's budget. Hopefully, we'll be back in shortly, but we have to cover the four and forty dollars And the online service. And then some counters in the seminar. So, totaling $44,857. Good news the money is able to be moved around. Contingency, I think this is only the one time this year we've taken money out of contingency. We usually set it aside. Seventy-five thousand. So we still have uh, some left. We still have about fifty left, uh, which hopefully will be passed back to. You. All those in favor of transfers? Aye. 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 So next is. Um, total refunds, make the motion, we approve refunds totaling $224.26 as presented in the list. One excess payment. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Opposed? Thank you. Approved payment of bills. I move to approve payment of bills totaling $102,500. $66.66, consisting of 21 22 emergency, 21 22 regular credit cards, and pay checks. Looking through, anything jump out at you? One vehicle had a whole bunch of repairs. What was that? Um, we had the senior center van lose its brakes. Ooh. And we had a uh, new pump required on a backhoe. It was expensive. Mm. And we had a um, van repair, but it was $480 for the facility vehicle uh, down for something like the kid number The good news is the senior van, everybody got to their appointment ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> no, we also had to fix, we had to send it to another location that would fix the electric lift. I was going to say, that's three years old. I was going to say, that's, no, that's it's three, it's at least three years old. Right, right. So right. Maybe right. four. Don't last as long as they used to. Oh, for I, really I know, I think the solid liquid solves just eat every break line we have. So, what, that it? wonderful environmental stuff that's destroying our bridges and that stuff? Right. Mm -hmm. exactly. <laughs> 
So this is the last of the radio upgrade. Yes, so that was the radio upgrade for the DPW, mm -hmm. all their vehicles and the fire department store upgrade. If you want to see ours, Mark has in, in my office, office. I can monitor when the police troop K. Troop I can't street. get them off it. <laughs> I can't talk to anybody. I can listen. Are I can talk right? to DPW. Well, you're a you're a volunteer fireman. No, volunteer police for Essex. Okay, so yeah, they're they're addicted. I don't let a scare in my house anymore. The, um, we also have an emergency channel, so if we do have an emergency fire, please, and all of us can talk on that channel all together. Okay, yes. all right, we got it. Uh, well, I'm ready to hand it to you. Oh, Mr. Chief, I'm very good at it. Well, one is whiteboard. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to make sure you have that. Um, all those are favorite painted bills. I, I can't stand all this new stuff. I want it plotted on a board. I, know. I need to see it plotted. 32 years in the Navy, you've always plotted on the stand. Chicago Fire had that as a whole episode. When the internet went down, we could do everything manually. Yeah. That's cool. I love a We were in Guantanamo Bay, last battle prop. The ship was pulling out after six weeks of professional training. We pulled off the pier, and all of a sudden, boom. Captain says, What's going on? Sir, the computers crapped out. I'm just gonna have to go back for the inspector goes. You're in a war. You gotta fight this war, Captain. Use your vessel. Looks around, he goes, anybody know how to run this conventionally? <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> it was great. It was so much fun. It was years before. Um your convention. <laughs> and you were voting. You sure? We just voted on it. Okay, yes, we did. I didn't hear it. We did. Wait. Audience citizen, anybody on there? Um, we got somebody named Lejave. Jalave. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there she is. Um, she's here. She's still here. <laughs> uh, okay. And my wife doesn't think I'm funny. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> you say, oh, your husband's so funny. My wife goes, yeah, he's great, right? He's so funny. Okay. Um, board member, audience, citizen, Ian, nothing? Uh, I think I've said it no. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, board member, comments. I just have one. The lottery, if we're going to continue with it, I'd like to see who lost this year taken out if we do the same kind of thing next year. So Perfect. So they never have the same person losing 15 years. Yeah. Oh, I get it. So it's like you pay yeah. your yes. dues. You, you paid your dues. Out you're, one you're, year. You're, you know, with my luck, I would lose three years in a row. So that's just why. Okay. No, do people, it takes the randomness out of it. But I if pe do people always use it? I mean, could um, sometimes there's empties. Um, well, that is a complaint because not yeah. everyone has a boat on their yeah. mooring, even though they pay for it. Right. Uh, but I don't know how you please. Oh, so they've already paid for it. Right. Because frequently, those, there's a lot of empty moorings. Well, they could just be gone for the weekend. Those calls go to the seagulls take care of. What's that? The seagulls and the corn grains. They'll drive somewhere away. Mm. Yeah, there is an executive session just real briefly. There is. Just so. Do you have any comments? Thank you. Uh, at this time, I'd like to uh, move into executive session. And, uh, and that is it. Jen, Connor, thank you. At 754. And Jen, I'll tell you when we come back in. So you can. Yeah. Sounds good. Good night, everybody. Good night, Jen. Nice night. seeing you. Take care. Eight, seven. Regular meeting will resume at 8 57. Good. Uh, and I will try to make a motion. We adjourn the board of selectmen meeting. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> I don't know.
Make sure we get these back when we destroy them. It's public time. You want these back on? It's, it's a public document. Those are the nice things. So I have no strategy. They call it home for a reason, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we have a bill sign, also the public meeting sign yep. that went around. Yep, they're they're both there. These are signed. So when you try it on board, it's right backwards in on the bill. Oh, to Sat yeah, Satellite in the Air Force. So actually, you can write pretty good. I'm a backwards. sign maker. I can do it upside down, backwards, mirrored, whatever you want to do. Mirrors. Because <laughs> you're right. They all just mm -hmm. become figures. Status quo is bad. I tell you, I love them. Uh, you know, you just, that's why over there. I've asked for a big map of the town. We have put up, put up there where roads are down, where there's, yeah. you know, hazards and stuff where people can pass. This stuff, I, I'm not. It's not as easy to see. It, it's, on the phones and stuff? 